Macintosh operating system goes all the way back to 1984. Currently, we use Mac OS X, which is the latest generation of the Macintosh operating system. But, go back a couple of decades and you have version 6.0, which is what you see in front of you. We don't think of systems being like this now because systems are different nowadays, but they still follow a lot of the same basic fundamentals like the desktop and the menu bar. At least in the Mac OS, that's how it is. So look at Mac OS X, take a good long look at it, and now look at this. This is Macintosh System 6, only a couple of generations ago, but still a couple of decades ago. So when the Macintosh first came out, it ran version 1.0 of the system, and they started doing updates pretty quickly, and they got version 6 out before the 80s was over, and then they went into generation 7, which lasted a long time. So, what you're seeing here is version 6.0 of the Macintosh system. More specifically, 6.08. Now, as you can see, it does have a menu bar, it does have an Apple menu, and it has a desktop. So those basic fundamentals still carry over to today's operating systems. However, the capabilities and graphics are very much different. So let's take a look at this. So, in the current version of Mac OS X, the Apple menu provides you basic system functions, like shutdown, restart, system information, the App Store, and recent applications and documents. However, in this version of the system, the Apple menu provided about panels for applications. It provided desk accessories, which are kind of like widgets, is how you would think of them today. And in specific configurations, it also provided a multitasking menu. So the Apple menu provided those basic functions and included multitasking in it. We'll talk more about MultiFinder in a bit. And of course, you have your file edit and all those other menus, kind of like what are in the Finder today. But if you look at this, you can see this version of the desktop and the Macintosh Finder is very different than in OS X today, and that is because it's much older. So let's go explore this a bit. So if we go to the Apple menu here and click About Finder, you can see it is version 6.1.8, and the system is 6.0.8, copyright Apple Computer, 1983 to 1990. And as you can see, the system shows its memory here, and the finder shows its memory usage here. You didn't have an activity monitor or anything like that. When you go to the Macintosh Finder info panel, like we just did, you actually see the memory right here. And when you open up other applications, that expands. We'll show you that in a bit. So let's go explore this system. The system did have a bunch of default desk accessories built in, and it did have an application to let you install more. Here's an example of a common desk accessory. A calculator. So, that's pretty basic, right? Just a simple calculator. You can use the keyboard, you can use the buttons, and you can perform calculations. And as you can see, this is where that menu changed. It now says about DAs, and it tells you about the desk accessories. So you could open up multiple desk accessories, like we can open up Puzzle here. We can open up Scrapbook, which lets you basically maintain clip art, sounds, and graphics, and text, and all that stuff all in one application, and you can copy and paste. And let's open up Alarm Clock. So we have these desk accessories open, and you may think of them as widgets, or if you're on a Windows system, gadgets on your desktop. Because when you look at it, it looks kind of like, hey, I got this clock on my desktop, I got this puzzle on my desktop. Very similar looking to that Windows 7 gadget stuff. Those gadgets are, and widgets in Mac OS X are based off the basic desk accessories built in to this very old version of the Macintosh system. Desk accessories go way back to version 1.0. So I can use all these and have them open without the system using much memory. So to switch through applications easily, you can obviously go to the menu like I was talking about, but if you just have desk accessories here, you can click the icon in the upper right and it'll switch you to the finder. So I can switch to desk accessories, switch to the finder, back and forth, back and forth. That was a handy multitasking button. It kind of is like Alt-Tab or Command-Tab nowadays in OS X, Alt-Tab on Windows. So if I go to About the Finder, you can see we're not using that much memory. We're not using that much more memory. This thing has one megabyte of RAM. This is a Macintosh SE. It only has one megabyte, as you can see, total 1024. So I can have those things run in the background, no problem. So if I switch back to the desk accessories, you can close individual ones or you can hit Quit and it'll shut down the whole thing. So all the desk accessories go away. So that's kind of how like widgets were in OS X today. That's kind of how they were back in the 80s on version 6.0.
So if we go up to the hard drive here, and this is how you got to your applications, there was no dock, there was no applications folder, you just opened up your hard drive and you got your applications. You can insert floppy disks, install programs, and if you haven't installed, just open them up from the hard drive. So for example, let's say I've got MacWrite 2, I just open up that folder, and I'm going to open up MacWrite 2. So just double click that. And here I have MacWrite 2. This would be compared to something like Pages or Microsoft Word. Those modern applications, they go back to this time, and this is where their looks come from. Microsoft Word even existed back in the 80s. In fact, Microsoft Word came out for the Macintosh before it even came out for Windows. So this is a very basic word processor, at least for the time it was pretty advanced, but now it's not too advanced. And you would go through your menus to change your fonts and your sizes and your styles and your formatting, and if the cursor moves, that would be nice. And that's how you would change everything. There weren't a lot of toolbars because you couldn't really fit a whole lot of graphical elements on the screen. So this toolbar is pretty limited and you got your ruler. So instead of all your fonts and stuff being in a toolbar like it is nowadays, or a ribbon like in Microsoft Office, it was still all in your menus. Spell check, format, styles, all that stuff was just in your menus. So I'm going to go through the finder and open up a file, actually. I believe this is in MacWrite2. And I'm going to show you another basic element to the system, which is a save panel. So if I go to File Save As, that's something we still do a lot, you can see this is the save panel. This is how it was in Macintosh version 6.0. You can select your destination here, file type, give it a name, and save. And you can change your drive and change if you change if you want to have the drive ejected or inserted. Like if you had a floppy disk in and you were on it, you could press eject. It would take it off the system and eject your floppy disk. So that's how save panels were back in 6.0. Very different than how they are in Mac OS 10 today. So now if I go to the Apple menu, this is what I wanted to show you about MultiFinder, which was a multitasking feature in an earlier version of the Macintosh system. And it got updated for 6.0.8, or 6.0 more rather. And as you can see, this is version 6.0.8 of MultiFinder. So as you saw when I went to that, it lets me choose what application I want to switch to. So I can click Finder, it brings me to the Finder. I want to go to MacWrite, it brings me to MacWrite. So not only is it an interface to switch between applications, it's actually the foundation for multitasking. If you do not have MultiFinder enabled, you cannot run more than one app at once. The only thing you could run alongside other applications is desk accessories. If you do not have MultiFinder on, you cannot use multitasking. And I will demonstrate that now. So. In the current version of Mac OS X, if you want to change a startup device, you go to System Preferences and you choose Startup Disk. And then you can choose what device you'd like to start up on. On this version of the Macintosh system, you do that from the Special menu. You can clean up windows, empty your trash, erase hard drives, restart and shut down. But, as you can see, there is a Set Startup option. So this is how you do it in the old Macintosh system. So I could choose what disk I want, and I chose System 6. And I could choose MultiFinder or Finder. And I can even have it open up applications as I start up. But I'm just going to set it to Finder only since I'm going to Finder and not MultiFinder. So I hit OK. The system properties are set. And I hit Restart from the menu. It is now going to reboot the system. Look at that nice startup time, by the way. Okay, so now I'm going to do what I said I would do. I'm going to go to the system disk, and I'm going to open up MacWrite. Actually, let's make it a different program right now. Let's open up Calendar Make. Maker, I should say. I think the title got cut off. Okay, so here I have Calendar Maker. It lets you make calendars. Pretty sweet. Now, if I go to the Apple menu, as you can see, there are no multitasking options. I cannot get back to the Finder. I cannot open up another app. Like I said, the only thing you can do is open up desk accessories. So let's say I needed to do some calculations or I needed some clip art from my scrapbook. That is all I could do. I could not do anything else on the system. That is when multitasking is turned off, and that feature, once again, is called MultiFinder. So if you boot off a floppy disk, you cannot enable MultiFinder, but if you boot off a hard drive with a system that supports it, 
you can run multi-finder and everything is a lot better because then you have multitasking. So I'm going to go back to the startup options and I'm going to switch back to multi-finder mode and reboot the system. So now once I do this, I can do multitasking as much as I want until that one megabyte of memory runs out. Now let's take a look at how you change settings. In OS X, you use System Preferences, pretty easy application to change settings on your computer. Well, this is how it was on version 6.0 of the Macintosh system. Control Panel is a desk accessory. You go and open that up, and this is what it looks like. You have your settings all grouped here, and you have some categories in a scrolling bar on the side. There were no pictures you could set for your desktop, so you set patterns. You can go through patterns and select what you want and change your settings like this. So there I got a different pattern, a different pattern yet again, or you could erase these yourself and just set the squares however you want. So I can erase all these and then make that my background, just like that. I can change keyboard settings, mouse settings, I can also set the startup device from this control panel. There's also sound, you can change your default system sound. You can change your volume. So yes, that is how it was back in 6.0, and you can have other control panels installed too as well, because this one is not included by default. I installed it off the operating system diskette. So I can do things like turn magnification on, and turn this close view thing on, which enables the settings, and now I can zoom in, just like you can do today with universal access on Mac OS X. So instead of control and scrolling, since the mouse didn't have a scroll wheel, you would just set it through the preferences like this, and that's how you would get your zoom in. And I can turn that off now and go back to normal. So that feature was even here, all the way back in the late 80s, with Macintosh System 6. So that's quite a bit of how the old Finder and the system worked together and gave the user a graphical user interface to work with their computer. Just look at that. It's pretty amazing how far we've come because Mac OS X and other systems are significantly different. And when you think about it, it's a long time ago in technology years, but overall, this was only about 22 years ago, this version of the system, and it's definitely come a long way. So I hope you enjoyed this demo of an old version of the Macintosh system running on a Macintosh SE, and I'm going to shut this down now and show you what it was like to shut down these old systems. That was it. You press shut down and it just says it is now safe to switch off your Mac. You can restart it by clicking the button, or you can just reach in the back and flip the switch. That is all for this old demo. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.